Hey RoboKids, Coach Jason at RoboKai here. Last week we showed you a compound gear clock that some of our students had made. One had built everything from the second to the minute hand, which the minute hand initially was located on this uh, 60 tooth gear here. And then the other student added a um, hour hand by uh, basically just replicating this pattern over here. One of the problems we identified with that was that the hour hand was not moving at a 3,600 to one gear ratio. In other words, it was turning, um, it wasn't moving one complete rotation every time 3,600 seconds went by, which is what you need to get an hour. I, I challenged the students to sort of uh, figure out what the problem was. I, all I told them was that the gear ratio was not correct on the hour hand and uh, they needed to identify why that was occurring. So the first student uh, kind of examined the, uh, the situation and I was having a little trouble with it. So I had him write out on a whiteboard what the gear ratios were. I, I basically, um, you know, cause they, they thought that it was, it needed to be a three to one or a, a uh, yeah, three to one, uh, four to one, five to one, and then another three to one, four to one, five to one gear ratio. Um, but when, he wrote it out, he realized that this was actually now a one to five gear ratio because the 12 tooth gear was being turned by the 60 tooth gear ratio. So um, we were gearing down, 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 and then all of a sudden we were gearing up, which was causing this to move a little bit faster than it needed to. So he um, went ahead and redesigned the system so that we could continue that down gearing and he did a beautiful job here. Um, now, when I uh, was looking at it, I actually came up with a different solution, um, probably a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, although my solution didn't require all these lifts because I kept my gearing down flat on the table. And the way that I did it was I just inserted a, um, a four, another 48 tooth gear, basically a four to four gear ratio, you know, which is essentially a one-to-one -one gear ratio. I just inserted that so that I could extend this out further and get some space to be able to um, attach my 12 and 60 tooth gears and, and, and essentially just repeat this after I had extended the gearing out. Um, that, it worked fine, um, but that, I like his solution better because it uses fewer gears, which means less friction. Um, and, uh, even though he had to use all this stuff to stand everything up so that the gears could actually touch each other underneath, um, I, I think it works out really well. So goes to show a 10-year-old kid knows a lot more about this stuff than I do whenever you just let them go at it. Um, and then the other issue that we identified last week was that the second hand was moving uh, counterclockwise while the minute hand, which was originally mounted here, and the hour hand were both moving clockwise. Um, and, and, I, and I said to the students, uh, you need to have them all moving in the same direction, you, clockwise preferably, because that's the way the clocks move. And so uh, the, fortunately, when he re-geared this stuff, these two hands now turn in the same direction naturally. So that solved that problem, but this one was still spinning in reverse, and he just did a really beautiful, um, easy fix here. He just added another 60 tooth gear up here connected to this one. So that's a one to one gear ratio. We're not losing any speed there other than just a tiny bit because of the friction. And he mounted his minute hand up here. So I, uh, I'm really, uh, really happy with what they came up with here. Um, you know, this is probably only about an hour's worth of work between them. So uh, pretty cool. Let me go ahead and start it up. Um, and uh, the, the program that the second student wrote um, basically had the second hand moving at 64 RPMs so to compensate for some of the friction that we were uh, losing speed here on the minute hand. And um, the other student decided to write yet another program that allows you to either have everything turning clockwise like it should or counterclockwise just by hitting the check button twice. So I think when we start it here, it's gonna start off going in a counterclockwise direction. And then if we hit the check button again, it just moves everything back to clockwise. So uh, 
I, I said to one of the students, maybe we could build a time machine if we just do this and go back in time. He thought that was pretty cool. I think he actually wants to give it a shot. Maybe we will. Um, so anyway, this is, this is the clock now moving. So um, let me zoom in here. I'm going to try to get something to line up into one of these holes here so that we can see the movement of the hour hand. I'm going to try to get those two holes lined up there. If I hold this very steady, we should see some kind of movement from the hour hand. Yes, we can see that beam right behind it slowly being covered up. So it's working. Uh, we tested the minute hand and the second hand with a stopwatch and it's pretty accurate. Um, I'm guessing that the hour hand, if you let this thing run long enough, it, you'll, it'll lose a lot of accuracy because of the uh, friction. But uh, very cool, homemade clock. Took us about an hour to build. The kids who built it had never even done compound gearing before and this is a, a creation completely of their own design. So that's really cool. Um, I think the, the other student uh, was going to try to add some color LEDs. So these, these are not turned on right now. They're not hooked up to the battery or the brain, but he wants to have the color LEDs uh, actually turn different colors depending on like seconds, minutes, and hours. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for here, but we'll find out probably next week. And then um, I think they were also talking about maybe adding some chimes, like every time one minute goes by having this, uh, this brain, which can play very rudimentary sounds, play a chime. Um, we talked about actually using this as our timer for our robot uh, games because we do one minute matches. Um, so maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know. It's pretty, it, we'll see how long this uh, system lasts before they rip it apart and build something else with it. But um, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching uh, this video. And uh, if you didn't check out last week's video, be sure to do that so that you can see what this clock looked like before they made the mod modifications to it. Um, you know, if you have a suggestion for a better way to make this clock, feel free to post that in the comments. Um, or if you have any cool modifications that you'd like to see us make, um, you can post that in the comments and I'll run it by the students and see if they want to give it a shot. But anyway, compound gear clock, very cool. Compound gearing is a very useful thing for speed and torque in robotics. And hopefully they're going to retain that lesson when we get into our competitions. Thanks for watching. Check us back for more videos in the future. Bye-bye.